Everybody ready? Um, it's not easy having these type of press conferences after going through what we have been through today. It's very sad for our parish. Uh, this morning around 8 a.m., well, we received a phone call uh, from an actual concerned family member who, uh, after could, uh, not being able to get in touch with his family, went to the residence, which is located on West Bates Street, which is right outside of Albany, and uh, actually found this crime scene. Shortly thereafter, deputies responded. We set up a, a crime scene. We have been processing this scene. And uh, what we know so far uh, is we have a uh, husband and wife, uh, Jenny Williamson, 49. We believe that, Ms., uh, that Jenny actually shot her husband, Stephen Williamson, 49. And then also uh, she shot an eight-year-old juvenile whom lived in the house. This is uh, not um, those type of scenes you want to see. Unfortunately, it happened. I know there's a lot of rumors and things that are flying. That's why we want to do this press conference to try to get you as much information as we can as quickly as possible. We do know that these two are not from here. They've only been in Livingston for a couple of years. I'm sorry, for less than a year right at that. Uh, we believe they were from the Jefferson Parish area. Uh, we also have not had any calls at this residence that were violent related type calls. We've been over there for you know alarms and things of that nature, but nothing uh, pertaining to violent type uh, crimes. We are still in the process of trying to process this crime scene. Uh, we do believe that um, the same information some of you probably have had about possibly if Ms. Uh, Jenny had some type of mental issues, uh, we have heard the same. That has not been confirmed. Um, but anytime you see these type of scenes, you believe something's got to be going on in order for this to happen. And like I said, we don't have any background on a uh, domestic uh, issue in this house. Not saying it's not one, but we don't have anything that actually points to that. Uh, so we're, again, trying to find what we can uh, through uh, whatever evidence we have collected so far. We believe, again, just to go back over, that she shot her husband and then shot the juvenile, uh, which was eight-year-old, and then shot herself. And that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I will entertain any questions that you might have. Okay. Do you know when it happened? I know it was discovered this morning. We believe um, that this happened late Friday or early Saturday. Last week? No, this, this past This week. past, yeah. Okay. Was the eight-year-old uh, Jenny Paul who was born? We just, it was not her child. It was just an eight-year-old that was living in the home that they had custody of. Can you go into, I know you said it was a shooting. Can you describe that a little more, single gunshot wounds or multiple shots fired? I don't really want to get into that, but it was, uh, it was they were all killed with a, uh, with a gun. You know, these are, these are tough because, I mean, this, the people that are involved are deceased. Um, so we, it's, having to rely on things of electronic devices and, and trying to see if anybody may have known anything, uh, talking with other family members. So it's, uh, it's going to be a process trying to figure out what actually happened when there's no one that was actually there that witnessed it with them that would be able to talk to us. It, it makes it really difficult on, on, in a crime scene and investigation, but it just it's going to be a timely process, but we'll, we'll get it and get through it and try to get you know, more answers because everybody wants to know why and you know I just I just can't answer that. Sheriff you did say this appears to be domestic at this time? We don't know that it was domestic um, so we, we don't have anything that points toward that but obviously there's something going on uh, for someone to pick up a gun and do what they did. And no previous call outs no for you guys? No previous calls whatsoever and that's so far the, the complete search we've done Unless there was another agency somewhere that may have something that hadn't got to us yet. But as of right now, we haven't found anything. Any surveillance video cameras? Nothing. Now, looking at a trailer on the property. Um, I'm sorry, please I'm start sorry. over. I know they had a trailer 
trailer on the property with the wife or the husband possibly staying, one staying in the trailer and the other staying in the house? We believe them to be staying together. We just know it was a family member. I don't want to really get into that too much, but a, fam a concerned family member went out to the residence after couldn't get in touch with them. Do you have any more information on the juveniles, male, female, any other medical conditions? We don't have anything on as far as medical condition. Um, you know, we're trying to find next to kin. We're still in the process of making sure all the family members are okay. What's the process look like moving forward? I mean, so it's just you know, it's like, you know, everyone involved in the process. So what's kind of the process? Well, you know, just going through the evidence that you've collected. And uh, like I said, they're wrapping it up now, trying to process all the evidence and go through uh, whatever electronic devices we may have. Uh, if we do have any type of surveillance video, anything like that, to just see if we can find something else. Uh, possibly, maybe there was someone that came and visited them. Maybe they were in touch with a friend. We don't know. Um, but as right now, all we have is what evidence that we've collected. I'm sure if your response to what's happened in your parish. This is horrible. I mean, this is something that you never want to see. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, everybody has questions. Uh, I do believe that uh, it is safe to say that this is not a, a random deal. This was uh, it's, it's contained, confined, that people can at least rest knowing that it's not a random shooting. I know people always get concerned about that, especially West, West Bates being so close to the interstate. Uh, but this is just a devastating type of situation for, for anybody. And uh, so my thoughts and prayers are with the family and I ask that everybody keep them in their thoughts and prayers because it's, you know, they're gonna have a difficult time to get through this. So this is, uh, this is devastating. You've talked about there are a lot of rumors out there. Any you wanna dispel? I believe I've kind of touched on them, you know, uh, and, and look, I know with, with social media has changed the game with law enforcement. Sometimes we have about three minutes to get the story out. And in these circumstances, it's tough to do that. Um, but we try to do as, as much as we can, as quick as we can. And I, and I hope that we're able to get the information out um, as quickly as possible. And we'll continue to try to do that. And I appreciate everybody's patience with us when it comes to that. As you can see, these are not, this is not a very easy, none of them are ever easy, especially something like this. Anything else to add? Have any other questions? Both of them were four, both of them were forty nine, and the juvenile child was eight. I appreciate y'all working with us to get this information out to our citizens. I know it's very important that they understand exactly what went on, and as we get more information, we'll do the best job we can to get that information out. And again, in closing, just please keep this family in your thoughts and prayers. They're going to need it. So thank you very much. Thank you.